with this great city. Not one flag was thrown for this kind of dancing and celebrating. Oregon, despite the way they've been treated here in Husky country, they are officially the home team. Mark, back here with me. And guys, Oregon's pass defense, that's been the Achilles heel this year. They gave up 33 touchdown passes. Most in the nation wouldn't figure to be a problem against this Wake Forest offense. No, they run all the time. But if you think about it, so far in all these bowl games that we've seen, guys, teams that are predominantly run-oriented have not been able to run the football. Wake runs 72% of the time. They won't be able to run. Oregon wins. You he's like one, it? How about, come on! He's one and seven in his picks. Wake Forest <laughs> wins. They'll run the option up and down the field. Oregon doesn't see the option that much. Keep an eye on fullback Ovi Mahaley. He will run right behind the center and get a lot of tough yards in between the center and right and left guards. I'll tell you, the other thing that's happening, the underdogs. Seventh yes. underdog win in the Gaylord Hotels Music City Bowl with Minnesota beating Arkansas. We can see if Wake Forest can pull that off against Oregon. Ontario Smith, perhaps his final game in that duck green. We shall see. Today by Ontario Smith, the first duck running back to ever be three-time All-Pac-10 trying to run him down. Wake Forest, Calvin Pace, already the school leader for tackles for losses. He can set the sack record today. From brand spanking new Seahawks Stadium in Seattle, Washington, it's the Seattle Bowl. Wake Forest out of the ACC, Oregon out of the Pac-10. And with that, we say... Greetings and good afternoon from the great Northwest. I'm Steve Levy. A year ago at this time, many felt Oregon should be playing for a national championship. They finished ranked number two in the nation. They start this season 6-0, got as high as a number six ranking, but from that point on, they lost five of their last six. And partner Rod Gilmore, Mike Bellotti, the head coach, says there's no way they will suffer from a letdown today. Well, he's right. They won't. And Wake Forest, believe me, they're excited to play. You know, in bowl week, we've seen motivated teams like Tulane and Wisconsin do well. Wake Forest is motivated. They missed out on a bowl game last year, and they're playing one of the best programs in the Pac-10, a chance to knock them off and do something special for the Wake Forest program. And guess who's back? for Oregon. Oh, Ontario Smith, somebody who's a special player. Now, he's got an issue with his knee. He missed a, a lot of the second half of the season. He needs to test it tonight. When he's in there, he helps his team. They scored 38 points a game, 25 points a game without him. And the other issue with him, NFL. If he plays well, he might decide this is it and he's out of here. Speaking of issues, who's going to be handing off to Ontario Smith? Let's go down to the field and Alex Flanagan. Well, Steve, all week long, the big question for Oregon has been who will start at quarterback. Jason Fife will start, but only for the first two series. After that, backup freshman quarterback, Kellen Clemens, will come in for the next two series. Now, both quarterbacks are aware of this situation. They have two series each to prove themselves based on their performance. After that, coaches will decide who will lead this Duck team the rest of the game, Steve. All right, Alex, thank you. And there is Jim Grobe, the head coach of Wake Forest. Interesting for him, second season at Wake. However, in all the years of coaching for him, eight overall, this is his first time as the head coach in a bowl game. And of course, uh, Mike Bellotti, the head coach for Oregon, so much more experience. The Bellotti era at Oregon has been its most successful ever. Now we are set for the opening kickoff. Wake Forest won the toss. They will defer. Justin Finisi and Alan Amundsen are back deep. And it will be Amundsen from the 10-yard line. Out to the 20, the 30, and a tremendous run back by Amundsen. He brings it out all the way to the 41-yard line. And there is Jason Fife, the man who was given the task of replacing Joey Harrington. A legend, of course, in Eugene and trying to move on to the National Football League and pretty successful rookie season with the Detroit Lions. And Steve, Jason Fife was very much like Joey Harrington the first seven games. 15 touchdown passes, two picks. The last five games, a little bit more Barney Fife in him with the eight interceptions and only 50% passing one time. Very good. On first down and 10, they'll pitch to the left side. It's Ontario Smith. And he might have a yard on the play. Looks something like this. Ontario Smith, he'll get the most majority of the, the carry. Sammy Parker and Keenan Howry, outstanding wide receivers. The offensive line, Joey Forster. He's the birthday boy. Happy birthday, Joey. He, along with Nick Stites, will be featured. Oregon always features their athletic guards, and they have them 
in a pair there on second down and eight. He'll try Smith again. He's out ahead of the 46. Calvin Pace, all NFL eyes will be on him. The linebackers, Brad White, he's the guy. Coaches say you have to tell him exactly what you want because he'll do exactly what you say, even if you give him the wrong information. And Quinton Williams is the guy everyone is focused on. He got a lot of respect from the Oregon offensive coaches. Good toss out to the left to Keenan Howley. See how good that or close that spot was. Remember, the ball is what's important. The ball is in the left arm. I think that's a pretty good spot. When you actually look at it, it looks like that ball got out of bounds before he crossed that marker. Good call. First big play of the game. Ontario Smith. I'd say he's got more than inches there. He's down to the 31-yard line before finally being dropped by Warren Braxton. Good call on fourth and inches, Rod. Uh, not a bad idea to give it to that guy and then attack him straight ahead. And Ontario Smith, the question is, really, does he have his full health back. Well, you can't tell there. Huge hole. Huge hole for him to get into. But he will test his quickness today. Can he cut? Can he dart the way he normally does? That's the big issue for him. Gain of 18 on the play. First down and 10 at the Wake 31. Fife off play action. Have the ball deflected. Let's go back to this quarterback issue a little bit for Oregon. Yeah, Jason Fife started all 12 games. And when you start 12 games, you expect to be the guy. Now, Mike Bellotti says the passing attack didn't do well the second part of the season. So it wasn't just the quarterback. It was an issue of drop passes, poor line play, and all those things. And Fife says, oh, if that's the case, how come I'm the guy in the hot seat? <laughs> all the focus, all the credit, all the blame, all the credit. Of course, too much always winds up on the quarterback. And Fife has been dealing with the brunt of that. Ontario Smith was taking on some people there, and he was dealing with the brunt of Caron Bracey came up with the About big 205 game. pounds on a 5'10 frame. And he can normally hang in there. He's dishing out some punishment there on that one. But he hasn't practiced live an awful lot in the last few weeks. Third down and six. Out of the shotgun. Here's Fife. Pressure from the backside. Let it go. And well over through intended target Keenan Howry. And that'll bring up fourth down. And some points on the board. Jared Siegel. Will attempt from 45 yards away. Hit 19 of 23 during the regular season. His long was 59 yards. So 45 is not a problem. Siegel punches it through. Kellen Clemens to his right uh, is a series away from getting his crack at the Wake Forest defense. The big play, of course, the fourth and inches. Ontario Smith breaking it for 18. Here's Jared Siegel after the field goal. Puts it in the air. Chris Barkley. And it'll go out of bounds on the kickoff. Free kick out of bounds. The ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down, Wake Forest. First down for Wake. They're led by quarterback James McPherson. He's an Arizona native, so he's certainly familiar with the Pac-10 and well aware of what Oregon is capable of. He's not 6'2". Yeah, we, uh, we are, he's closer to 5'11". Hand it off to the first man through. It's Terrence Williams. The backs and receivers. Ovi Mahaley is the fullback, a real standout. Fabian Davis does everything for Wake Forest. Special teams, receiving, rushing, etc. Bit of a shakeup on that Wake Forest offensive line. David Walters is start at right tackle. Tim Bennett moves to left tackle with an injury to Mark Moreau as Moreau's could play in the game. Rick Carson throwing across his body and completing to Jax Lanfried for a big game of 26 yards down to the 35-yard line. Well, what McPherson does so well, and we saw it on tape, is roll to his left and throw on the move. He does that as well as anybody I've seen. He likes that movement. So they do it with him early. They want to throw the ball when they want to, not when Oregon wants to dictate it. Lofted it over the head of Stephen Moore. Out of the shotgun. McPherson, confidence, steps up some running room and splits through the defense. He's inside the 25. Robbie Valenzuela gets the start up front in place of Haloti Nada, who everyone is talking about, the true freshman. We will see him. And the linebackers, David Moretti and 
Kevin Mitchell, arguably the two best defensive players for the Ducks. First down and 10 at the 23-yard line. Again, handed to the first man through. It's Mahaley as well. Send the man in motion out to the far side. It's Fabian Davis. Here's McPherson handing off to Terrence Williams. And he crashes inside the 15. Interceptions are way down just before this season and throwing 11 a season ago. Oh, yeah. He became much more careful with the football and much more confident in the second year of the offense. McPherson, option to the right, going to keep it five, trying to get in, and they'll stay. He was just short. They're going to spot it inside the one. zone here. I mean, they really run the option maybe five or six times during the day. Here, he sees it. He knows it. There is no way he's pitching that ball. And he's trying to stretch and everything to get in there. First down and goal from inside the one. Obi Mahaley, touchdown. And Wake Forest takes the lead. And this front line, this, this is a little superiority for you. Look at that offensive line. Just drive the Oregon defensive line a yard back into the end zone. Mahaley goes in standing up. Wake Forest doesn't look exactly organized here. The Demon Deacons forced to burn a timeout. They only had 10 men on the field. Excruciating extra point ride. That Wake was forced into taking a timeout to make sure they had the proper personnel on the field. Hey, they don't get the bowl games too often. They weren't prepared for this extra point. Here's Matt Wisnowski. The extra point. Boots it through at 10, 26 to go here in the first, first. time around when Oregon went on offense. Keith Allen, the third string wide receiver, checked in. Rod, why? Well, Andy Ludwood, the offensive coordinator for Oregon, told us, hey, if we're going to run the ball, we got to handle Quentin Williams. We want to send a message because we've got small receivers. What they did was they put Keith Allen in, 205 pounder, and sent him right after Williams. And boy, did he deliver a blow. Look at that. And so now Williams understands. If he's going to get involved in the run game, he's going to have to worry about big receivers coming out to hit him. Now, if you're just joining us, you know, that play only went for two yards, and Allen and Williams were nowhere near where the ball wound yeah. up. Yeah. But it's sending a message. It's send the message, and then they ran on Tara Smith the rest of the drive. Yep. And Williams clearly was a key guy that the Oregon offensive coaches are focused on, and you get the sense of that by designing that play particularly just where he loves to hit. Wisnowski will put it in the air. 7-3 early in favor of Wake. Allen Amundsen out to the 30. And Amundsen is blasted down at the 32. Karan Braces leading all Demon Deacons, making his 28th consecutive start in this bowl game today. Second series for Fife. He's going to put it in the air. And a poor throw. Wasn't unable to step into it. And undershot Sammy Parker. Yeah, a little bit of pressure there. He threw it off his back foot, backing away. And you want to give Sammy Parker a chance to make a play. And I, I got to believe, though, you know, Sammy Parker and Keenan Howry, I mean, these are, these are two great receivers. They're probably a little bit frustrated second half of the season, not getting the ball as much as they normally would have. Heck, they played with Joey Harrington last year. Rod, this has to be going through Fife's mind right now that this might be his last series, potentially, of the game, depending upon how it works out. This time, handoff to Ontario Smith. Out to the 35. It'll put Fife and the Ducks in a third and long. Fife, one of five so far for four yards. Third and seven. Fife out of the gun, two receivers to his right. Single one to his left. Pressure puts up the middle, Fife throws. Intended for Parker, who went up in the air. Fife was belted, so too was Parker. And it goes as an incomplete pass. Jamie Scott came flying up the middle on a blitz. Watch him coming here. He's to the tight end side with Reister. Reister, the first guy. Then you bring the full back over to help out, too. Matt Floberg, a double team on a guy who was dealing with a broken leg is back in the ball game. And you saw Fife. He's still under pressure on the other side because of the double team. Jose Arroyo. Gets the punt in the air. Fabian Davis from the 17 for Wake Forest. Lots of east and west. Not a whole lot of north and south. Finally cuts it up to the 27-yard line. It's a 47-yard punt. Both teams played without some star players in their last couple of ball games. Oregon without Harrington. 
First down and 10, hand your third man. It's Fabian Davis, the receiver on the end around. You know, you knew it would be that guy because he is that man. There he is right there. Just watch him on his track. Watch the great block that he gets to get his guy to the outside. Uh, you lost him there, but trust me. Trust me on that one. I do trust you, Rod. <laughs> Williams, the ball carrier, down to the 36. There is a flag down. Defense, five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. What Jim Grove has brought here is an offense that he had at Ohio University and originally years ago started out as the wishbone. It is no longer an option offense. They run about a half dozen option plays, but they will spread you out and they want to run the ball. They don't throw it much, maybe 15 or 17 times a game. After the penalty, it's first and five. Play action doesn't fool anyone. McPherson is dropped at the 47. Igor Olshansky came flying through. Three sacks during the regular season, and there's a bowl sack for him. And Olshansky is 305 pounds out of St. Ignatius High School in San Francisco. They barely touched him. They looked like they were trying to set up a screen or something. He got in there in a hurry. Igor Olshansky, born in the Ukraine. McPherson the throw. Able to hit Jax Landfried. Third down and six. Out of the eye. Option. McPherson going to keep it. And he is very close to first down yardage. You know, we talked to Nick Aliotti, the defensive coordinator for Oregon, and asked him about facing his offense. He said, I don't know what you call it, what you do with it. Least of all, what you call against these guys. On fourth and inches. Handoff to Terrence Williams. And he should have enough push the pile for the necessary yard. Develop young players. They can't get the Florida State and the Clemson kids who come with the height, the weight, and the speed right away. But that was a neat point. Player development for Grove and Wake Forest. Again, across his body, able to complete to Fabian Davis, who cut it inside of the 20-yard line. At the 20-yard line now. Out of this no huddle. Handed to the first man through, it's Mahaley, and he's dragging some people down to the nine-yard line, down to the field, Alex Flanagan. Well, Steve, Oregon coaches talked to us long and hard about how their football players had to play disciplined football against this very unconventional Wake Forest offense that relies on misdirection, that fools the opposition into making the wrong reads. And they have said it is like any offense that they have seen all season long. Oregon coaches have emphasized the importance of reading keys. Hey, Steve and Rob, they don't know what to call their offense. <laughs> Nobody seems to have a name for it, huh? Yeah, they can use a nickname, use something. But right now it is wildly effective, Alex. Chris Davis, they're going to say he stepped out at the six-yard line. Well, I want to go back to what Alex said yep. about the misdirection and the reading your keys. That is so important. For example, sometimes, most of the time, you read in an eye formation, you read that fullback. You try to figure out where he's going. He will lead you to the play. In this offense, the fullback will lead you away from a play. And we saw that over and over on tape. So the Oregon players have to get used to their new keys in some instances and staying away from old keys that can cause them problems. Tenth play of this drive. Up and over is Williams. But did he get over the goal line? No, he didn't. Terrence Williams went up and over, but not over enough, Rod. Oh, you might as well go for it on fourth down. And here's the reason. You know, you're close enough. He's going to wind up being so close to the end zone here. You've got a chance to back them up if you don't get this. And on top of it, Steve, you don't get to bowls very often, and you have the potential of putting a young quarterback in the end zone running the offense. Hand it off the first man throw. It's Mahaley waiting for the indication. Well, I saw Haloti Nada in there along with Oshansky. That's about 600 pounds in the interior defensive line. It's hard to move those guys. You see them, there's 96 in there getting some, some depth, some push in there. And Keith Lewis, 16, gets in there as well. But just look at the push that Nada, 96, gets. He just reestablishes the line of scrimmage in the backfield. And a smart decision by Mike Velotti. He does not send Kellen Clemens out to start his first drive in his own end zone. Again, this goes against the script that Oregon had planned. Fife remains in the game, and he'll sneak it and try to buy himself some breathing room and maybe out to the one, the one-and-a-half-yard line. 
Let's go down to Alex. Hey, Steve, Kellen Clemens was prepared to go in. He had his helmet on. He was firing up the whole team. All of a sudden, a second before they ran in, he was told he is not going in. He ripped off his helmet, and Fife ran in for him, Steve. Good job, Alex, down on the sideline. Clemens is the more excitable of the two. We'll see if we get a chance to see that out of him. But you understand the decision-making process. You've had a guy who's in there who's warm. Don't bring in a quarterback who's cold and ask him to take a snap on the goal line. And, of course, the coaching staff being able to adjust on the fly as the situation dictates. Here's Fife going to air it out down the sideline. Parker was there. Good coverage by Daryl Shaw. And Fife just missed connecting. How about the other side of it, Rod? Fife not expecting to come back out. Maybe less time to think about it as well. Might help him. I think you're absolutely right. You know, what the heck? You know, go out there and just play. He wasn't expecting, you know, maybe a sign of confidence that they want him in there handling the ball down around the goal line. That's got to pump him up a little bit. Plus, I'm pretty sure Oregon didn't plan on trailing 7-3. And it really could have been 14-3 if not for that duck defense stopping Wake at the goal line on a fourth down play. Backed up. Let's watch the, the feet for Jose Arroyo. He is pinned to that end line. Low snap. Fumbles the snap. Picks it up. And he's fortunate just to get it away. And it takes a bounce. And an Oregon bounce. Look like Fabian Davis had a chance. First down and 10 for Wake Forest. They'll hand it off to Chris Barkley. The true freshman is dropped for a loss by Devin Long. Hey, let's go back to that punt out of the end zone, Rod. Yeah, a great job to get it out of there. Now, we thought on the other end that Fabian Davis might have made a mistake. Look at this. Ball caroms away from him. Actually, a smart decision by Davis not to try to go after that ball when it took a really nasty hop and just shot away from him. And Arroyo is certainly fortunate. He'll get credit for a 57-yard punt. Second down and 11 after the loss. Out of the 40-yard line. Hand off to Barkley. Maybe got back to the original line of scrimmage. Here's third down and nine. McPherson out of the gun. He's got a couple of running backs with him. Roll to his left and then handed it off to Barkley, cutting it back across the green. He stopped at the 50 by Keith Lewis. Another big stop by Lewis. And he'll be shy of the first down marker. This is more of that misdirection that we talked about, Steve. You get people going in one direction, and watch. All the action here is going to be this way, and he's going to come back there. The Oregon defense will buy into the action initially. They see it right, they go that way. Misdirection, reading your keys, staying in your lanes, playing your, your coverage, playing your responsibility is what Oregon has to do. Blackamire steps up into the pressure and got it off. And it will bounce out of bounds at the 15-yard line here in Seattle. We've experienced some rain and lots of coffee. Ontario Smith, the ball carrier. Under Fife, the first three Oregon possessions, a total of 35 yards and three points. Kellen Clemens checks into the football game now, Rob. Right? Yeah, heck of a prospect. He's a freshman quarterback, redshirt freshman. Did not get many opportunities this season, but in high school, he was special. 102 career high school touchdown passes, 37 as a high school senior. Second down and five upcoming. Kellen Clemens. Going to put it in the air for the first time in the game. And he's going to complete it. Down to the 33-yard line. Hit the tight end, George Reister, on the completion. It's a first down. As for the quarterback situation and the thinking with going with Fife and then Clemens, we put it to head coach Mike Pilon. Jason Fife has had a great year by all standards, by his uh, statistics, by the fact that we had a winning season. Could we have been better? Yes. Was it his fault? No. And, but I do think that Kellen Clemens deserves an opportunity, more extended opportunity, so we're going to play them both. Um, Jason will start, and I, I believe both will play. I really believe the competition we've had the past two and a half to three weeks has improved uh, our productivity. That time Clemens will pitch to Ontario Smith out to the 38. Quinton Williams, his first tackle of the game. And certainly that throw by Clemens has to give him some confidence. I, I think so. Remember back when he opened the second half against Washington. He came in, first pass was called, was a deep out, deep corner, deep out route. He got picked off, and it changed the complexion of that ball game. 
kind of hurt his confidence. He told us that the other day. Well, he comes out, throws a corner route to the tight end here, lays it right on the money. He got pretty pumped up, and he told us he's a pretty demonstrative guy. That'll do it. Quarter number one comes to an end of the second annual Seattle Bowl. And the Demon Deacons just doing fine as we open up quarter number two. Wake Forest with a 7-3 lead. Kellen Clemens will hand off to Ontario Smith. He's got a couple. Jamie Scott made the stop. Wake Forest last possession, their first three and out. The first two were pretty good, Rod. Well, two big drives, only one touchdown, but it was McPherson who got things going. A little bit of option, almost got into the end zone. They did a lot of nice things. They used their big fullback, Mahaley, to get in there for their one score. They threw the ball to Davis when they had to, when they wanted to, picking up some yardage. Then they got stuffed the last time, and they didn't get into the end zone, even though they had a tremendous drive. 7-3, Wake Forest. Here's third down and seven. Clemens in a pressure spot, the throw. And he sailed it on Jason Willis. Two. Fabian Davis back deep. Again, pressure, Royo gets it away. Davis backtracking at the 11. And now he'll try to show you some of his stuff. And he pushes it out to the 23-yard line. Uh, hand it to the third man around. That is Fabian Davis. You'll see Davis all over the Rushing. field. Kick return and punt return as well. This is a well-rounded young football player. He is so important that Oregon has put a spy on him because he runs that fly sweep or that orbit sweep. Here's McPherson. Steps up. He was pounded as he released and just too far for Davis. He's the difference maker on offense. He's running free here. He got inside the corner. Aaron Gibson... Chance to make a play, just a little bit long. So far, Davis has a 10-yard punt return, 35 yards on reverses, and 11 yards receiving. McPherson again throwing across his body, and it's Fabian Davis on the catch, the 39. And it's the second time, Steve, we've seen him do that when he rolls to his left and throws across his body. Yeah, he loves it. He gets it right on the money there. Gain nice a 16 on the play. And off. On the left side is Terrence Williams. You know, you mentioned how surprised you are that Wake's ability to throw the ball against Oregon. The Ducks' pass defense was flat out horrendous during the regular season. 115th in the nation. The Oregon defense against the pass. Only 117 schools out there. Yeah, yeah, not uh, not real good. But that Oregon defense faced some pretty good quarterbacks down the stretch, but they did suffer. McPherson off play action. Down the middle of the field. Got a man. It's caught. Jason Anderson. Touchdown. Make it 34. Touchdown passes allowed this season by the Oregon defense. He beat Aaron Gibson, the true freshman cornerback, 57 yards and the score. And you say, how can that be? How can it be 34 touchdown passes against one of the top programs out of the Pac-10? Well, their corners play a lot of man-to-man. -man. They commit to stopping the run. And when you're a young cornerback, a freshman like Gibson, you're going to take your lumps. Troy Calhoun and Jim Grove of the Wake Forest coaches. Good job adjusting. They run the ball. That's their strength. But that's Oregon's defense strength is stopping the run. So they shake it up with the pass game. Matt Wisnowski puts through the extra Back point. to the touchdown catch by Jason Anderson. There's the single coverage we talked about. Aaron Gibson, there'll be good protection, but watch up here. That's press coverage. Gibson does not handle Anderson. There is no help. He's got to deal with them. He doesn't get a good bump on him. Anderson works outside and gets back inside. All McPherson has to do, Steve, is lay it out there for him and let him run underneath it, and he does. Perfect execution by Wake Forest. Jason Anderson led the Demon Deacons with four touchdown catches during the regular season, including a team-high 70-yard touchdown pass in the game against Navy. Coaching staff told us he has as much potential as any wide receiver on the team. He came up with a 57-yard catch on the perfect ball thrown by McPherson. Short kick out to the 32-yard line. Oregon only two first downs to this point. And on first down and 10, second series for Kellen Clemens. Under pressure from Pace, gets it away. Well, he didn't try to think about it much, but, you know, hey, yeah, he hasn't been hurt that badly in his life. And to have his knee makes him think. Second down and 10. Here's Smith again. 
And Smith rumbles down to the 35. Darryl Shaw brought him down, but not until he was already into the secondary. Ontario Smith so far, Rod, nine carries for 46 oh, yardage to this point. It's Saul Wake Forest. Clemens gonna step up. Looked like a mini option to start, and he hung on to it. He's out to the 48-yard line. Shaw and Williams finally brought him down. And you're right. That was some option. A little counter speed option there. They bring it back this way toward the sideline, and Clemens runs a little bit runs a little bit effective here. You know, comes back the wrong way as far as the defense is concerned. Cuts back inside. He had Smith out there where he could have pitched it to him, but he saw the crease inside and cut it back up. You know, I love when you say that speed option no you're right it, <laughs> that usually means i was i was in the neighborhood i was in the ballpark that's oregon's first third down conversion it goes for 12 yards send the man in motion they fake it to willis that should give it to willis faked it to the first man through on the wide receiver trying to cut it up field. dean hood the defensive coordinator for awake about those tendencies he said i've never seen so many different plays by oregon used only once here's play action clemens had all sorts of time lets it go now and he overthrew the receiver parker but he took a big time shot there good pressure by roderick steve clemens will take a timeout prior to the third and one being foot loose and fancy free about it oregon going for it once again How about this fourth and one near midfield hand it off and ontario smith has it for the first down and look how fired up kellen clemens is you can see he's head slapping everybody on the team certainly exuberant we asked kellen we were kind of kidding with him hey kellen about that first name you weren't named after kellen winslow by any chance and he said yeah i was <laughs> how about surprising that was i was shocked <laughs> i thought it was just a coincidence so folks big fans of pass, pass catching tight ends he's a quarterback though how'd that happen well that young probably they don't realize right he's going to be you know, on the birth certificate Thought he was going to be a tight end. Here's play action from Clemens. All sorts of running room in front of him. Now he dances a little bit, but he pounded out of bounds at the 40 by Karan Bracey. Let's go down to the field, and here's Alex. Hey, Steve, I've been watching Kellen kind of before he went in and when the defense is on the field. He has so much confidence already about him. You know, he said that he needed to stay calm, that he needed to have fun. It appears that he's doing that. Before he was sent into the game, he kind of rallied up his players around him, took complete charge, and then a lot of people came over, gave him high fives. Ontario Smith came over, gave him a high five and a hug, and he told us uh, yesterday that that was very important have his teammates supporting him steve alex clemens got in only four regular season games through only nine passes total and his skills are on display here this afternoon said he certainly pitches himself for the nfl just can't place himself in a particular team uniform here's the pressure from the back side clemens didn't feel it coming and he's dropped by kellen Brantley. really consists of the top returning tackler from a season ago well, there you see a couple of guys paying attention to pace to the right side, and that allowed Brantley to come in from the opposite side. Second down and 16. We'll keep an eye on pace here as well. Quick drop. Fight the throw to Sammy Parker. He's spun around and dropped down at the 31 by Daryl Shaw. Bring up a third and long. Yes, yeah, Steve, I, I'm a big believer that when you play the Oregon offense, you have to control their tight end in order to win. And I think Wake Forest has done a good job of that. I mean, Reister is a guy who's an effective blocker, and he also can get down the field. He has 36 catches this season. If you can control him in blocking and control him in routes, then you got a chance to handle the Oregon offense. If you don't, forget about it. Third down conversions, not a strong area for either school. So far, it's this day. Quick throw, able to complete the chase in Willis, but he's going to be short of the marker. Looks like he'll come up maybe a yard short, Rod. Karan Bracey was having himself a ball game already for Wake. And Mike Bellotti is going to go after this. And I think Bellotti is trying to send a message to his team that he wants them to compete a little harder. And it's just not at the quarterback spot. I think he's trying to tell everybody, we've raised the bar at Oregon. Seven and five is not acceptable. 
You got to do better than that, and if you're not willing to raise your level of performance, we'll find somebody else. And he's challenging his team in this bowl game, I believe. There you see the conversion rate. Fife is back in in place of Clemens, was going to be the quarterback draw, and Fife's not going to get there. He is rocked, first by Karan Bracey, and then he got some support from his teammates. So that fourth down conversion fails, and Wake will take over on down what else but the seattle bowl oregon had a 13 play drive resulting in zero points they turn it over on downs and wake forest will take over sent davis in motion gonna hand it to him on the reverse fabian davis with running room cuts it outside he's finally knocked down again any way they can get the football into the hands of that man fabian davis that's what they want to do Terrence Williams, the ball carry, and he sent flying back. About the psyche of Oregon. It's a team that had a disappointing season. They were 6-0 at one point, expected to contend for the national championship. They're 7-5, and, and they're down to a Wake Forest team that they were heavily favored against. Do they rise to the occasion, or do they just kind of go through the motions? And I think Velotti is going to continue to challenge these guys to raise the bar. It's going to be a penalty against Wake Forest. Illegal substitution. Preparing his team for their first bowl game under his uh, regime. Here's McPherson. Rolling to his right. And throwing down the field. Under through it. And it's perfect to Jason Anderson. Good job by Anderson to come back and bail out his quarterback, Rod. He throws the ball up because he figured that his guy, Anderson, would come back for it. Now watch. Right about here, he sees that he's covered, but he throws it anyway. And what does Anderson do? He just pushes more out of the way and comes back to catch the ball. Jason Anderson only healthy for the final four games of this season. He's been plagued by a shoulder injury this season. So far, Anderson has two catches for 94 yards and the score. Fabian Davis again on that end around. He's able to turn the corner as usual on a pretty good lead block. This time, straight handoff. Terrence Williams changing it up just a little bit. And you can see, Rod, looks to me anyway that the Oregon defense is kind of guessing, a little tentative, which is exactly what Wake wants them to do. Well, you know, they attack them outside, and then they pound them inside. And it's wonderful. I mean, you look at this. Now, this is after the fly sweep. Mahaley comes up the middle, bam, gets a great big block on Garrett Graham, the outside linebacker. Now they're pounding you inside after working you outside. On second down and four. Hand to the first man through. It is the fullback, Mahaley. Third and two at the 11 of the Ducks. Option, flip it out to the right to Terrence Williams. Turns the corner, and he is belted out of bounds of the three. Stephen Moore put a good lick on him there. Listen to this hit at the end of this thing. Oh. <laughs> and Moore stands over him. First and goal, Terrence Williams to the goal line, but not a crossing. I think it's a good idea. Mahaley did score the first touchdown, but was stopped at the goal line last time around. McPherson, the keeper, did he get there? There's the signal, touchdown. The offensive line is getting a charge the way Wake Forces is. You don't need a 250-pound fullback. Just let the quarterback get in right behind him. <laughs> but how about Mahaley? He will get involved anyway and get a little push. A lot of football time left as Wisnowski comes on to pump the extra point. He is not only dealing with a sore knee, now he has to contend with an eye that is almost swollen shut. You can see that he's icing it. His own helmet slid down, cut his eye. He will play, but it may be closed, Steve. Wow, that's a, you know, cut me, Mick. Cut me, Mick, from Rocky. I mean, that's... That's what that looks like. Ontario Smith as if it's not bad enough with the score being 21 to 3. Now Ontario Smith can hardly see out of one eye run. And remember, when Ontario Smith is in the game, they can score. They're about 38 points a game. Without him, they're about 25 points a game. Good job by Alex. You just assume he took a finger to the eye, but as Alex reports, it was his own helmet sliding down. Justin Finisi on the return. Out to the 40-yard line. First down and 10 for the Ducks of Oregon. Kellen Clemens will get a third series. And here it is. Clemens, the pump. 
On the checkoff down low to Matt Flober, the fullback carries across midfield and into Demon Deacon territory. 15-yard gain. And you were right again. He checked off again. Went that went down low looking for Floberg because Reister was the guy he wanted down the field. It's a smart decision by him to come off of Reister and drop the ball lower to the fullback. You know, Rod, uh, even by osmosis, hanging around with you for a whole football season, I'm, ba <laughs> I'm bound to pick up a couple of things. Now, if I could just learn some hockey. <laughs> we'll work on that. 2003. Here's Clemens rolling to his right, throwing on the run and completing to Keenan Howry. That's the second catch of the game for Keenan Howry. He is the school career leader in receptions, and he's working on a couple other records today. And he'll shoot for it as the game progresses. Again, the underneath pass that time. It's the tight end, George Reister. A timeout by Oregon here. Rod sporting mittens, folks, right now. That should give you an idea of the temperature here in Seattle. Here's Clemens. And it's still Clemens. And he'll be tripped up at the 30-yard line. Quinton Williams wrapped him up. It's a gain of six. Clemens during the drive, seven or for the for the game so far, seven of nine for 54 yards. And I like his presence. You know, he jumped up quickly, got to the line of scrimmage, encouraging his other teammates to get there. He knows what's going on around him right now. Good composure, good presence. And Ontario Smith has not played this series. Final 50 seconds of the first half. Clemens for Reister. And he's bumped out inside the 25. Stops the clock with 46 seconds left. Kellen Brantley made the tackle. The Ducks have one timeout left in the half. Let's well, see if we talked about Calvin Pace and that leg and how much a problem. There he is right there in the middle. You'll see him. He's not getting much going. Watch him run. He's really, that's the hitch he was talking about. It's amazing he's even trying to play with a broken fibula. Or yeah. healing from that, anyway. And with a 21-3 lead. Here's Clemens. Rolling to his right and throwing. It's Howry down to the 7-yard line. It's his third catch of the game. Warren Braxton bumped and him out. I think Mike Bellotti is going to have an interesting issue in the second half. This guy is starting to make some throws. He's starting to get some confidence. Watch him here. Moving on the, on the move. Nice bullet. Right there to Keenan Howry. This is a big-time throw when you can move to the right like that and throw that long out. Good cut by Howry as well. Clemens 5 of 5 on this drive alone. And I got a feeling Fife is well aware of Clemens' statistics to this point. Option. Smith checks in, and then he is flipped on the play by Eric King from his cornerback. Just desperately need a score to take with them into the locker room. Here's Clemens. The throw it is caught. Touchdown! Junior Sammy Parker, and that's six, and a strong, strong throw by Kellen Clemens. For Clemens, his second touchdown pass of the season. And Fife comes on the field to hold for the point after attempt here. And he's got to be thinking, so far, Clemens has outplayed me. And that'll be interesting, Rod. These are college kids. Let's watch the hole here on the extra point. It's just, a good look at Fife. Yeah, did you see the pat on the head by Sie Siegel? Pat at Fife. Snap and the hold are perfect. So too is Jared Siegel. 26 seconds to play in the half. Clemens goes 6 of 6 for 57 yards with a score on that drive, Rod. Well, there's not much room for error here. Clemens has got to stick this thing in there in a hurry because there's a corner lined up, man coverage coming inside. He throws a bullet. If he had taken anything off that ball, that is a pick six the other way. And he showed you a little poise there, Rod. He wasn't looking that way the whole time. Gave you a little glance to the right before throwing to his left. Yeah, he came with it. Now we're starting to see a little bit of what the Oregon Ducks, and Mike Bellotti in particular, have been seeing in practice from this guy all season long. Five, the man who started all 12 games for the Ducks this season. Jared Siegel to put it in the air. Fabian Davis from the 12. And right into the Duck special teams to the 22-yard line. Ramon Reed was the first man there for Oregon.
I think Kellen Winslow Sr. would be proud of his namesake. Kellen Clemens on this two-minute drive. He takes the ball up the field, picking up a first down. Good composure, pocket presence, knows when to get out of bounds, when to get up and get back to the line of scrimmage, and then makes the touchdown throw, a bullet to Sammy Parker, and he got his ducks right back in this ball game. Andy Ludwig, the offensive coordinator for Oregon, said when Clemens goes in there, something exciting will happen. Didn't necessarily know it would be good or bad, but it would be exciting. And so far, it's been good for Oregon when he's been He's the ball carrier for Wake Forest. Stopped by Moretti and some extracurricular after the play. But no flags and no more plays. That'll do it. First half is complete of the second Seattle Bowl, the first from Seahawks Stadium. And at halftime, Wake Forest will take a 21-10 lead with them over Oregon into the locker room. Press with Wake Forest. They've thrown the ball only when they wanted to, and they've run it the entire first half. So their offense, unique, different, and has really kept Oregon off balance. Clearly, the Ducks defense has been guessing. And as we open up the second half, they'll guess some more because Wake Forest will get the football. Jared Siegel. As it teed up at the 35, Fabian Davis and Chris Barkley are back for Wake Forest. 21 to 10, Wake to open up the second half. Low line drive kick. That'll take a bounce. And will bounce out of bounds. And there's the automatic flag. Let's look back at exactly what's taken place from our first half. Rod ESPN's game track. And no real surprise, I guess, Wake Forest, huh? Throwing the football. Big strikes at Jason Anderson to get them going. Ran the ball whenever they wanted, but then Clemens stepped in. Fast ball, throwing it down around the goal line to get them a score, get them going to Sammy Parker. And Oregon showed signs of life, Steve, right before the half, and they're going to need to show some signs of life on defense if they're going to have a chance to get back in this ball game all the way. Open up a pretty good field position. Fabian Davis coming around it for the first time all afternoon into the early evening that play doesn't work got to keep our leverage outside don't get confused by the misdirection they do a nice job of making sure that they are in position to turn it back inside second down at 13. McPherson rolling to his left has been so successful throwing across his body and he does it again. You know, as we've talked about, Wake Forest head coach Jim Grove is in his first bowl game, and you can really tell I spent the half in the locker room with him. He gave a fiery halftime speech to his team, and then he stood at the front door, high-fived everyone, gave him a pat on the back as they went out. Very pleased, obviously, with how his team is doing, Steve. Thank you, Alex. A handoff to Terrence Williams. Didn't get the bowl bid. They get one this year. They're excited about it, and they're playing that way. And we've seen bowl week teams that are excited about being in the bowl game play well. Hand it off to the first man through. It's Terrence Williams. Again, run of that no huddle. A lot of in the eye. A lot of things can happen out of it. Option pitch to Terrence Williams. Just across midfield. And he's in Oregon territory at the 49, stopped by Keith Lewis. Well, you see what Jim Grove has done in his career. He really learned an awful lot from Fisher to Barry at Air Force. And that's where he started getting his handle on the offense he wanted to run. You know, their offensive line play, they do a lot of cut blocking. That's where they really kind of developed that, took that offense over to Ohio. He had a lot of success there. And here at Wake Forest, two seasons, chance for two winning years. The three schools, his three most recent schools, all the top ten of the nation rushing offense. Air Force first, Wake eighth, and Ohio University ninth. It's Fabian Davis able to turn the corner. Keith Lewis, number 16 in green, is going to show up in your screen to the right. He is supposed, there he is, he's supposed to run this down. He's got the bad angle, and he can't get to Davis. Davis with the great speed to the outside. That's tough. You're a free safety in the middle of the field, and you got to handle that thing. Fabian Davis rushing six times, 63 yards. McPherson going to air this one out. It's tip. What a defensive play by Stephen Moore. Jets Lanfried was thinking about his celebration dance in the end zone. That was an automatic six, and Moore came out of nowhere to knock that one away. Oh, and his boys back at Dorsey High School in Los Angeles are going, yep, that's our corner. That's the way we do it. We treat corners that way. Look at that. Gets the right hand in there. He was beaten, but he didn't give up. And corners have got to remember that. you got to stay alive in the play. It does give the Ducks something to think about, though, Rod. 
Tim Fabian Dave Davis in motion. Hand it off to Terrence Williams up the middle. And he is finally brought down at the 30-yard line. Williams so far, 14 carries, 41 yards. His best run, a nine-yard gain. It's Williams again, and he has stepped into and driven back to the 31 by Kevin Mitchell, who's having himself a ball game so far. No doubt about that. Kevin Mitchell stepped up and delivered a big time hit. I mean, he may be the best player on this defense for Oregon. He's a linebacker, 5'11, 220. You'll see him step up right there, number 39. Watch him just scrape on over, get in the hole, bam. That's the way they taught him to do it at Modern Day High School. Remember Modern Day, number two team when That's he was right. in the country? That's a big time program. So tell me, how did Kevin Mitchell get the nickname Mini? I mean, there is nothing Mini about Kevin Mitchell. 5'11", about 220, and lays a stick on you. Very close to first down. This will be the sixth fourth down conversion attempt, and we're early in the third quarter. I love it. You're not playing for the national championship. Go ahead. Hand it off the first man through, Obi Mahaley, and he's got the first down. I wonder what Mahaley's dad thinks the now. The coach has told us on the offense for the Demon Deacons, he'd be the most likely player at this point to play in the NFL. We'll put a typical fullback. Hand it to Mahaley again. Grinding out another yard. So the NFL is finding out this guy is a guy who can play at the next level. He can run. You see the legs churning. He's got soft hands for making catches. And Wake Forest, very, very fortunate to have found him in this program. Mahaley making his team best 33rd start in this game. He tied a school record. He had four touchdowns in the opening game at Northern Illinois. Nick Ferson going to put it up across the middle. And Fabian Davis juggled it first and could not hang on. And somebody got McPherson's attention from the sideline that time. You better hurry, he's only got four seconds. Able to get the snap off, running to his left and handing off to Chris Barkley, trying to go to his right. And that wasn't fooling anyone, especially Garrett Graham. Matt Wisnowski is out of attempt. A 43-yard field goal. And he's got the distance, and it is good. Wake Forest would have preferred six, but they'll take three. 9.37 to play here in the third quarter. Not only they put the three points on the board, Rod, but they take about five and a half off the clock. Chris Noski would put it in the air. Allen Amundsen from the two. Amundsen is going to be dropped at the 14. That's where they'll take over from. It's time for Alex to take over. Hey, Steve, I took, talked to Coach Velotti at the half, and he said that the quarterback position for the rest of this game by no means belongs to Kellen Clemens. But Coach Velotti told me that at the half that Clemens will start because he has a hot hand right now. He also told me, though, that Fife is ready and waiting, available to go if that hot hand cools off, Steve. All right, Alex, you can see Fife still has the helmet on. He's ready to go in at a moment's notice. But Kellen Clemens... Well, lead them out onto the field for the opening possession of this second half. Ontario Smith, Alex reported on his eye earlier in the first half. He, too, is in the football game. Clemens to throw on first down. The out to Howry, got it, no problem. It's first down in yardage, and just like that, they'll move the chains. Look at all this room he has. You cannot give Keenan Howry that kind of room. This is a guy who's been a great performer throughout his career at Oregon, has had some big games. Big career for him. I love watching him. He's only about 5'10", not the fastest guy, but precise routes, great hands. Hand off to Ontario Smith. He's dropped for a loss on the play at the 25. Second down and 12. And flag flies. Yeah, Angle Terrio says starts. that was his. That was his. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. He doesn't make many mistakes, but Ontario Smith was probably getting the ball here and look at him leading. Just couldn't hold it. Couldn't hold it. <laughs> question, question is, though, will Ontario Smith go to the NFL, Steve? Do you think he'll be back next year? Well, I, I wonder how much of it has to do with this game, if, in fact, that'll be a, a deciding factor in it all. Or does he have something to prove come next season? Maybe improve his draft position. 
Here's Clemens. Oh, and a big stick. He's able to complete the pass to Matt Floberg and Brad White put a stick on him. You just know this is the linebacker hit. One, once you hear it, it's a linebacker hit. <laughs> White is the top tackler on the squad. He had 24 tackles in one game against Navy. Brings up a third down and 11. Out of the shotgun. Clemens. Blitz is picked up. Lost one down the middle of the field. And the two closest players to it were Demon Deacon defender. The speed of the game is an issue for Kellen Clemens. Again, only through nine passes in four games during the regular season. Yeah. You figure things will slow down a little bit with yep. more experience. You're exactly right. And, and you saw the confidence start to grow for him the third, fourth series he had late in the first half. Here's Jose Arroyo. Driving Fabian Davis back to the 18. Davis stumbles and regains his balance. And if he would have broken that tackle, it would have been maybe 20 more yards. He's dropped at the 40 by Jerry Matt. Showed up in Seattle. They brought some smiles to some other people as well. The Wake Forest players had a chance to visit the children's wing at, at Swedish Hospital. All a part of the great bowl experience for both of these schools here in the Seattle area. But reaching out to the local in the community. On second down, McPherson again throwing across his body because of a shoulder injury. McPherson, shoulder looks fine here, throwing down across the middle. He had pressure by Kevin Mitchell. Now watch him run the post route. He's open inside. All you have to do is put that ball out there, let him run and get it. He threw it a little bit too high, a little too far. Is that, I mean, that's a split second, Rod, right? He holds that ball another half second. That's a completion. Just let him run to it. Get him out, get out a little further to it. Again, try to throw it across. He fumbles the football. McPherson coughed it up, but it's picked up by Chris Barkley. And that's Haloti Nada that is down. Right now for Oregon, number 96, they're, they're great freshman defensive linemen. He was one of the, or the top defensive linemen recruit in the country coming out of Salt Lake City. Nada won the team's award for best first year player. And Nada's been dealing with a very difficult last couple of weeks. Here's Alex. Steve, he absolutely has. His father passed away 19 days ago. He was a truck driver. His truck went off a freeway ramp and slid into a ditch, and his father passed away. Now, this is the first game that Haloti has ever played without his father here. 50 of his family, friends, and relatives are here to support him tonight, and the team is wearing T-shirts dedicated to his father, Salomon, who passed away, Steve. But you've got to imagine a very difficult game tonight for Haloti. Solomon, not a, I mean... Coach Bellotti was telling us about him. Just a great big man who would give you a bear hug upon the first time meeting you. That's kind of emotional, friendly kind of guy he was. And Mike Bellotti and the entire staff really touched and hurt by this. And, and they have taken up the cause of they've got to get Bellotti, uh, 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 Nada to the NFL because he's got to care for that family now. Plackemeyer, the punt. Keenan Howry, the 30. 40, 50, trying to beat the punter, dies, and he was taken down from behind at the 44-yard line. It's a good thing Brad White was there, or that would have been six. Well, he's had some great returns over his career. This is the last one. He's part of a senior class at Oregon that has done some phenomenal stuff, and this return is one of those phenomenal things. Look at him make a couple guys miss. He gets into the seam, now he has a chance to go. It's just the punter buying enough time to allow someone else to come back, Brad White, and make the tack. So Oregon will take over in tremendous field position from the 43. Hand it off to Ontario Smith, gives it back to Howie, cuts it inside, using the sideline, picks up a block, and he's caught from behind at the five, by Quinton Williams. If you thought Howie was out of gas after the punt return, he's got plenty left in the tank. Well, I think he didn't get into the end zone because he was a little winded. Has a little trickeration, just the reverse. Oregon will do this when they get in the plus area on the field. Here it is. Fake the toss. We bring it around. Now watch the end of this. He's going to get a little tired right now. He can't run away from Quinton Williams. He's hanging on right there. That comes right after that punt return. I don't blame him for being a little winded. <laughs> 36 yards on that last play. 
Oh, sure. Now he needs a breather run? <laughs> yeah. Come on. We're right around the goal line here. It's first and goal from the six. If this is a touchdown by Oregon, it'll belong to Howie, whether he scores it or not. Clemens throwing. He threw it away. And this guy, Reister, is big around the goal line. They self-scout themselves very well. Yes, they do. They change a lot of these tennis. You really got to dig to get anything that makes you think you can get a, a line on them. Here's second and goal. Hand off Ontario. Smith took the first hit and kept on ticking. Here's third down and goal. Clemens will hand it off. It's Matt Floberg. Touchdown. The junior fullback from Portland crashes through for his third touchdown of the season. The Floberg, typically a blocker, he gets a bone this time and carries that bone all the way into the end zone. And Clemens, I tell you, the difference between Clemens and Fife, besides the completion percentage right now, is the emotional reaction. He seems to fire these guys up. He's very demonstrative out there. This might be the only way Fife gets on the field, holding the field goals and extra points. Brings it down for Jared Siegel, and he puts it through. Tomorrow, these two schools met in the Independence Bowl, and Wake Forest roared back from behind to win 39-35. If anybody's coming back today, it'll be the Ducks of Oregon. It's 24-17. The biggest storm in recent history, the day after Christmas, you said, some 60 mile an hour winds wreaking havoc at the Seattle area. Another kickoff out of bounds. That was a free kick out of bounds. Wake Forest will put the ball in play at the 35 yard line. First, First down. The 35. All right, Rod, a little help here. She's a tennis star, a supermodel, an international phenomenon. She is Anna Kornikova. And we'll take you on location for an inside look at her 2003 calendar shoot. A date with Anna. That's coming up tonight at 9 Eastern. Why are you so yeah. mad with Anna? <laughs> She's a heck of an athlete. McPherson stopped by Kevin Mitchell. And how did an Arizona quarterback wind up at Wake, Alex? Well, Steve, as you guys know, he did not have a scholarship coming out of high school. So he and his father sat down, put together a tape. They made 40 copies of that tape, sent it out to, I'm sorry, yes, 40 copies, sent it out to 40 schools. Tape included highlights of a game, a couple shots of James just throwing, and Wake Forest saw it, and the rest is history, Steve. Made his own Sports Center highlight film. McPherson, nearly intercepted, was looking for a land. Stephen Moore was there. McPherson is even talking about maybe doing a similar take to show the NFL people the senior quarterback. Waited nicely for that one. Is there a flag coming? There is. McPherson all of a sudden has missed his last six. That after starting seven for eight. Ryan Plackemeyer, they're in punt formation. Plackemeyer will put it out. Watch out for Keenan Howry. And there will not be a return this time. First down and 10 now. Five to snap it for Kellen Clemens. Have we seen the last of Jason Fife? Pitch to the right to Ontario Smith. Bit of a high pitch. Smith had to bring it down. And then he has brought down himself at the 25. So I don't think the confidence is there right now. Smith was sixth in the nation in rushing before injuring that knee in the eighth game against USC. Sat out the Stanford game. And I think the injury will play a part of that. He may be concerned about being hurt next year and may want to leave. Third and six now. Wake showing pressure, they drop out of it, they rush four. Here's Clemens throwing, and incomplete. Looking for Jason Willis, pretty good coverage on the play. 12 yards better than his regular season average. And he'll boot this one away. Fabian Davis waits for it, he'll take it at the 34. Trying to make the move, and all he bought himself was absorbing a big hit. Taken up by Justin Andrews, the redshirt freshman out of St. Pedro, California. Look at it there. One of the great landmarks in our country. There's no question where you are or what you're looking at when you see the Space Needle. It has to be Seattle. And this is Seahawks Stadium, and this is the Seattle Bowl. 
Wake Forest will look to add some points and take some time off the clock and try to shorten this game. 340 left in the third. They lead by seven. Off the option. Fabian Davis trying the right side. Oregon, they're no strangers to the Seattle area. They come here every other year to take on Washington, but Coach Pilati said it's more like a business trip than you're in and out. They've been in for a long time here, Ron. Oh, they have had it from the locals. They've been booed at the Sonics game, <laughs> booed at a hockey game. They were even booed at practice. Some guy showed up wearing a sign that said 42-14 Huskies. Handoff to Davis, try on the other side. And he coughed up the football. Did he get it back? David Moretti brought him down. Oregon says they have it. Let's see. Yeah, they got it back. The, the, the reason they're treated that way, I mean, some of the Oregon players, the younger players, like, hey, why are they all over us here in Seattle? We're not playing Washington. And, and nobody seems to explain the reason for the hate. It just is what it is. It's gone on for a long time. And, you know, part of it goes back to when uh, Rick Neuheisel was at Colorado and they played Oregon in the Cotton Bowl and they did the fake field goal late in the game and Bellotti and Neuheisel don't have what does it say they don't send Christmas cards to each other? I mean the Oregon Washington rivalry is near the Oregon Oregon State rivalry which says something right there. To give you an example of it when the wind was really bad the other day Wake Forest got to practice at the Washington indoor facility not Oregon. Timeout is taken by McPherson and Wake Forest. Both have treated Oregon since they've been here, and we're not making this up either. There's been a great deal of recognition of Oregon football here, probably positive and negative. Uh, I was surprised at the basketball games, at the hockey games, at various places that there was booing, flat out booing. And, and I said initially in, in jest that, boy, there are a lot of Wake Forest fans here, and uh, knowing that there really are not, that it's uh, Husky fans. And I guess. You know, I, I don't know what that means. I guess they, they care a lot about us. You know, I guess uh, caring is close to loving. <laughs> so a sign of respect, I guess, Rod, when they boo you. If they didn't care, they wouldn't boo. Here's McPherson. Wide open has a man. It's Jason Anderson. Touchdown. Institutions by both schools for the extra point attempt from Matt Wisnowski. Puts it through. Jason Anderson does a nice job. He's here. He's going to come stop, and then he's going to go. And watch what happens with the safety. The safety bites on the stop. There you see him settle. Here he comes over. Stop and go. Oops. That's Aaron Gibson, who was playing in kind of a safety spot. They had two receivers to that side. Aaron Gibson bit on the hitch part of the hitch and go. Perfect. Uh, Anderson last season was the first freshman to lead the team in receiving since 1978. He had 33 catches, and that puts Anderson over 1,000 yards for his career. A sophomore. And the kick. Allen Amundsen. And clearly, Oregon needs something good to happen. Still on his feet is Amundsen. And he's near midfield. Wait a second, did he fumble the football? They're going the wild on the Wake sideline. The Wake folks are calling for the fumble, but it looks like they're going to mark him down. Oh! And there's the indication! Wow! Robinson, a great return, negated, and that is the game's first turnover at a pivotal point in the game. Daryl Shaw, the junior from Bladenboro, North Carolina, was able to force the fumble on the kick return. Well, you know, he was fighting for extra yardage, and then I I thought he was down on the play, and apparently the crowd thinks it's a bad call, too. They just showed it on the big monitor here. There you see Amundsen right there. Look for the knee. He looks down, and the ball then comes out. That's, that's not a good call. He does look down, no question. And you can hear the crowd in the background. The first turnover again of the game likely wasn't even a turnover. But yeah. it goes Wake's way. Yeah, he is clearly down there. Then the ball comes down. And now it comes out a full beat later. And remember, Steve, he had a broken foot that kept him out of many games the first part of the season. 
and he was just rounding into great form when he goes down there it looks like it's on the same the same leg that he had had the issue with before. And you hear the applause and that his final college experience will be being going off the football field on a car a lot to this team he's going to graduate communications major and again came back after the injury really helped his team in the second half of the season clock is winding 90 seconds to play third quarter second down and six 31 17 Wake Forest Nick Ferson gonna hang on to it didn't fool anybody he's pushed back to the 40 open out of the eye again late substitution issues for Oregon looking rather disorganized did they get the timeout looks like they did Ducks forced to use a timeout and we mentioned Oregon getting booed everywhere they go including that basketball game this was halftime of the Sonics and the Raptors game at Key. There's Jason Anderson of Wake Forest. Joey Forrester of Oregon. That was an air ball rod, I believe. And it was actually won by Oregon. Fifty throw contact. Here's McPherson. Did he sneak it in there? He did. At the 41 now of Oregon. Looking for more. McPherson hands it off to Chris Barkley. Takes it down to the 38-yard line. Rod Gilmore and Alex Flanagan, Steve Levy, and our outstanding ESPN college football crew wishing you happy holidays from the Seattle Bowl as we open up fourth quarter action. Obi Mahaley is the ball carrier. They have turned it around to balance out their attack. Third and five. Hand it off to Barkley. Fourth down and three. This is not a gimme. Hand it off, first man through, Mahaley, forget about it. Not even close. Elote Nada is in there. And then Junior Siavi is in there as well. Igor Oshansky, he's a 300-pounder. You got two 300-pounders in the tackle spot in there, trying to move them out of the way on a short yard situation. Forget about it. There's another hair guy for you. Is that, has that game ended, by the way, yet? Is that, <laughs> is that game over yet? Ontario Smith, the ball carrier. Loberg is the single back behind Kellen Clemens. Looks like it's his the rest of the way. Clemens will throw. Incomplete. Jason Willis, nice grab at the 39-yard line. As far as Ontario Smith goes, will he stay or will he go? We put it to Mike Bellotti, the head coach. I'd say they're probably 50-50 right now, and I, I think that's good, actually, considering. I think that he has... We've had one uh, fairly lengthy discussion about the situation, and I said, hey, I'll, I'll help you do whatever you think is best, and I'll, I'll be an advisor and a confidant, and I'll also present our side of it and see what we can do. And I, I think he's really looking at it both ways and trying to figure out there's a chance to come back and obviously be a special player in a special program and may help us win a national championship. He said that to me, and I said, sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> Batted up and in the air. George Reister was the intended target. Brad, Wright, Brad White was there, nearly intercepted. Big third down play, and they did not go to Ontario Smith there. Bring up a, a fourth and two. They're not going to go for this one, Rod. What do you think? <laughs> I don't blame them here. In their own territory, you got time. You're down two scores, almost 13 minutes to go. Yeah, kick the ball away. Jose Arroyo is back at the 26. Protection, plenty of time. What a punt this is. Fabian Davis back to the 10. A little stutter step dance. And gonna find himself in a whole world. Tommy fumbled the football. And it's picked up by Wake Forest Brad White. And White does exactly what you're supposed to do there, Rod. How many other college kids would have tried to pick that up and scoop it into the end zone? And White, which is exactly what the coaches told us, he does what you're supposed to do just about every single time. It's just Davis trying to get a little bit more, and he gets stripped there. Ball gets knocked out by Matt Floberg, who is on the special teams and plays fullback for them. Hand off to Chris Barkley from the 10. With first one out of the shotgun. 
Certainly doesn't mean they're going to pass it as it's an inside handoff to Chris Barkley. Steve, our game track bringing you up to speed on things. Second half, Keenan Howry just really got it going on an end around following a big punt return at set up Oregon in the second half. And then it was still McPherson getting down the field to Jason Anderson. They have connected a couple of times with big scores. Third and one. Hand it off to Fabian Davis coming around. Blackamire will get it away. High, spiraling kick. Howard dropping back to the 27 now. Out ahead of the 40, taking on some people. And Oregon, time to get something going offensively. It's Kellen Clemens' show. He connects to Keenan Howry just across midfield. Second down and one just across midfield. Take the handoff. Quick toss to Sammy Parker. He's got the first down. And he's slammed out at the 44. On first down and 10. Clements, good protection. Now break down around him. Ontario Smith on the dump off. And he just gets back to the line of scrimmage. Montique Sharp. Big nose tackle was there to make the play. Yeah, that's not typical Ontario Smith. He usually shakes a guy like that. Here you see him right there. Just going right over Bull Rush, right over his guy. And actually, he gets a face mask. The guy he was up against grabbed his face mask. I think it was Mike Delagrange who pulled him down. Reister in motion. Now they send Floberg in motion. And here's Clements. And it's better down at the line of scrimmage. Not much of a rush here. Remember, he's just really kind of gingerly dealing with that leg, but he gets up high. And did you see the way he came down? He came down protecting that leg, that left leg. He does not come down on it. Comes down one leg on the right leg, the good leg. See the numbers on pace. Kind of a shame, Rod, but it's reality. He said, you know, all the business of NFL future, agents calling his hotel room, has kind of taken some of the fun out of what should be a fun time, his senior season and the whole bowl experience. Here's Reister. Oh, there was a big time block on the far side. Jason Willis laid out one of the Wake Forest defenders. Yeah, Quentin Williams is a guy that they were trying to make a marked man, and you see that? There's a first hit, and then he comes in again. Jason Willis looks him up right there. Bam! Wow. Poor Quentin Williams. A deep cleaner, Rob. <laughs> Not going to leave anything in the tank, right? Ontario Smith, the ball carrier. That was another fourth down play. They're becoming so commonplace, Steve. It's hard to know that they're showing up. And they didn't get it. Wake Forest defense takes over. I mean, think about it. Oregon only went for it 12 times all season on fourth down. Kellen Brantley came up with a big hit on that fourth down and it's been the phrase of the game one of these two teams will take over on downs and this time it's wake and that oregon offensive line will be good next year it's a young line that's been together all year but a lot of sophomores in there fabian davis in motion that's time it's just a fake to him as they hand it off to chris Barkley. this would be one of the biggest wins that that program's had Inside handoff to Barkley. And he's out ahead to the 43. To put that in proper perspective, this is Wake's sixth bowl appearance since, ninth, since 1888. Oregon, they've been the six consecutive bowl games. I mean, that, that really spells it out for you, the difference in the programs. Yeah, yes, it does. <laughs> you know, this, there's no doubt about that. And Wake Forest, their style of play, so different from what you see. No huddle, hurry up. Shotgun, run the ball, pass it as little as off. Hand off, it's Barkley again, right into the middle of that Oregon line. The time taken off the clock. They've got one timeout left. 6.36 to go here in the fourth. Oregon is gonna get the football. And also, Clemens has his helmet off. Ryan Plackemeyer puts it in the air for the 35. Another high spiraling kick. Keenan Howry will let it bounce. Let's see. Wait, did they get there? Well, 
But remember, it's not where you land. It's where the ball is. Does the ball break the plane? And apparently it did from that angle. And it's going to be Kellen Clemens coming back onto the field, Rod. Quite a surprise. The way that Fife was warming up, I thought he was heading on the field. Here's Clemens. Maybe his last shot with the football. Crossing pattern that just behind Sammy Parker. Here's Clemens. Backside pressure. Steps up. Right into some more pressure. And he's going down at the 18. Roderick Steven. But well, watch what he does here. He's going to step up. And then he's going to step right up into it. Now hold up right there. He kept moving forward. Clemens. Throws. Wide open was Parker, and he's able to stay in bounds. Parker, look at him. No one in the frame. You don't even see the corner until now. That's about a seven-yard cushion, 15 yards into the route. That's a lot of room. Seven and 15. That's 22. That was a 23-yard gain. Very close, right? Here's Clemens. Throwing and completing. George Reister, the big tight end, getting involved. He was the second leading receiver for the Ducks during the regular season with 36 catches and got the team award as their most improved player. I like him a lot. He's a big time player. He's about 250 pounds, soft hands. I think he's a great blocker. I mean, to me, this guy has big time future written all over him. Think about that position for Oregon. The last five Duck tight ends and six of the last seven all played in the NFL. They don't like the matchup with Parker and Howard. They're too quick, too fast. Two receivers out to the right. Clemens looking to left. He's belted. Loose football at the 35. That was Dominic Anderson who came flying in. Well, here he comes, left side of the screen here. You'll see him come clean. There is no sense at all by Clemens that he's coming. And they rule that an incomplete pass. Now Arm the rule forward. Yep, that's the rule. Any motion forward, any voluntary motion forward, it's an incomplete pass. Fourth and eight and going forward at midfield, and why not? Here's Clemens. Steps up and throws, and he skipped it short for Jason Willis. Would have had first down yardage. Yeah, he had him out there. And how about Wake Forest mixing it up, bringing the pressure? Dominic Anderson once again coming on the blitz. A little zone blitz behind it, zone coverage behind the blitz so they wouldn't get beat deep. Forcing that throw, and Clemens did not get enough arm into it. Rod, so impressed by Wake Forest. Only once all season did they win or lose consecutive games. Back in October, on the 5th and the 12th, they won at Georgia Tech and beat Duke as well. After that, they alternated wins and losses. And Chris Barkley, the ball carrier there. Rock continues to wind under five to play. Four to snap it, and they do. Inside handoff to Barkley. Got first down yardage, and he's taking on some people at the 27-yard line. People like Aaron Gibson. And Davis in motion to the far side. Hand for the second man through. It's Chris Bartley. Kevin Mitchell makes the tackle. Hey, Steve, let's go back and play. And you talked about the style, physical style. Watch the right side here. Watch the cut block by the Wake Forest offensive line. They will get in on the, 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 the feet, the legs of the Oregon defensive lineman. Now, a lot of people have a problem with the cut block in there because it can lead to injury. It's not illegal, it's not a cut block, but it is something that I think is one of those rules that should be changed because it is dangerous. Second and seven now, seven, six, you see it beneath the game clock, and with five, they do snap it. And Barkley, the ball carrier, and again, they'll milk the play clock. Down to two when they snap it. Barkley will try the right side. And he bangs down to the 10-yard line. Rasuli Webster made the stop. Brene Hadalid, a uh, fine stage manager. When, you, when you're a senior, you want to finish it up. Even if you had an injury, Calvin Pace was going to finish off this season. 
no matter that he was coming back from a broken leg. He played the entire ball game limping around to try and make plays. He got in, he created some havoc, knocking balls down, forced double teams, allowed other guys to make plays, and that, that young man will be an NFL draft pick next fall. Second down and eight from the 10. Playing two bowl games at Wake Forest. That tells you what pace is all about. False As start. Flags fly, the false start. Now stop the clock with 3.07 to play. Most proud of the fact he's playing in two bowl games at Demon Deacon. And again, this is only the sixth bowl appearance for Wake Forest since 1888. Hand off to Barkley. He's carried the mail ever since the injury. You got to remember what Wake Forest is doing here. They are knocking off one of the top programs in the Pac-10. And you're talking about Mike Bellotti, a coach who is a phenomenal guy. And this could be huge for Wake Forest. 31-17, three minutes to go. The ACC, Rod, you know, it's not just dominated by Florida State anymore. Maryland last season might be a new player in the ACC. Chris Barkley into the end zone. <laughs> for the touchdown. And this is gonna look pretty impressive in the newspaper tomorrow, Rod. Hey, it's gonna look pretty impressive next year as well when they look back on this season and they have notched in their belt a win against the mighty Oregon Ducks. And there's some love. They're set for the extra point. And he puts it through. That was a drive of 44 yards on seven plays. They cut everything off on the backside so you don't have any pursuit. That allows to make sure that he can get in there and to the end zone without the backside pursuit coming to get him. Front side blocking is very good. But again, the cut blocks on the backside prevent you from having pursuit while the trend continues. If you're a motivated team playing in the bowl week, you had a pretty good chance to win. Kicked out of bounds. This is the second meeting all time between these two. The other meeting, 92, also a bowl game. The Independence Bowl. Oregon jumped out to a 22 to 10 halftime lead. And Wake Forest, though, would explode for 29 second half points. Capped off by John Leach's six yard touchdown. And Wake Forest beat Oregon by four. Right now, they're up by 21. Look at the Wake Forest bowl history to this point. And rather impressive. Looking to win their third consecutive bowl game. Jason Fife is in a quarterback. Complete to Sammy Parker. Well, they say incomplete. Looked like Parker had it, but not long enough. Braxton put a pretty good lick on him. I was going to say, he had the ball for a moment, then Braxton had him. That'll make the ball come out. Tough spot for Jason Fife, the starter all season. And now he finds himself really in mop-up time, Rod. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think there's going to be a pretty good battle in Oregon in the spring for the quarterback spot. They're not used to having battles. They're used to having a guy. Joey Harrington, of course, the guy by a long shot. Prior to this season, that ball is tipped up in the air. That one off the hands of Jason Willis. Montique Sharp had the pressure and right now a couple of plays in a row the players aren't making plays for for five couple of catchable balls yeah you, you mentioned harrington there's aj feely akili smith you go back a ways you can find bill musgrave chris miller and of course dan fouts and norm van brockman a rich history rich tradition of quarterbacks at oregon third and ten upcoming two and a half to play in the fourth a date with anna is coming up next here on ESPN. It's not a new reality show, folks. Here's Fife, hit as he throws, and that'll be in Oregon. That's Mike Bellotti. I mean, he told us he's going to be at Oregon a while. Remember, this is a guy who could have gone to USC and Ohio yeah. State. And his son is going to be a freshman at Oregon next year, so he says he's not going anywhere. Good for four or five more years. That'll be good news in Eugene. On fourth and ten. Fife on the run. And he's taking some people on. Takes a couple of shots there. Corey Randolph is in at quarterback. Give a breather to James McPherson. Minute 40 to play in the football game. 
Handed off to the first man through. Senior quarterback James McPherson had himself a ball game. Started red hot, Rod. Six of his first seven. Goes nine of 16 for the game. A couple of scores. Really good with the deep ball. For 241 yards, a season best. And he talked about sending tapes to colleges. Might not have to put together a tape, Rod. Just hand over the Seattle ball. Yeah, just, uh, you know, Tebow this thing on out to the NFL. On third down and five. Nick Bernie will get the carry. Our bus ride, depending upon your mode of transportation. This will be tough to swallow. As David Moretti of Oregon said, a loss here would be a bad end to a season with a bad end. And that's the way it'll end. Congratulations to Jim Grove, his first bowl game as a head coach, and to Wake Forest for polishing off Oregon, and they do so in a big way. 38-17 to 17 is the final in the Seattle Bowl.